I gave up drinking after I cheated on my partner. I woke up confused and in someone else's bed with no memory of the night before. As I started to come around, snatches of the evening began filtering back to me. I remembered flirting with a guy, then I had a memory of getting a taxi back to his place. Suddenly, it dawned on me. I have cheated on my boyfriend. I was so frustrated with myself. I had blacked out again. When I talk about blacking out, people tend to assume I felt unconscious after having too much booze. What it actually means for me is that for chunks of the previous night, I was alert and active, dancing away but the next morning, I couldn't remember jack shit. That morning, I was completely mortified. This just wasn't me. I've never cheated on someone before. I decided I had to tell my boyfriend. I knew the shame would eat me up otherwise and I wouldn't have been able to hide it. We were a long distance and I didn't want to tell him over the phone. So I got straight on a coach to see him. It was a long ride from London to Liverpool. Going over what I was going to say to him in my head. I felt sick with anger and fear and I hung over. Oh my gosh. To make matters worse, I hadn't used any contraception. Could I be pregnant? Could I have caught an STI? My thoughts were building up and I was a complete wreck for the time I arrived. It had been three years since I first met Alex, age 16. I was at a gig when I noticed how hot the band's bass player was. After they performed, the band came off stage and my friend introduced me to them. We got a talking and he hit off immediately. Alex was a really kind, sweet guy, so talented and caring. Soon, he became my first love and my world. I'd follow him to every single gig, no matter how tiny the venue was. I thought we were going to be together forever, but that shit ain't gonna happen anymore. Like many teenagers in the UK, I was drinking well before the age of 18. At house parties with older friends or in pubs that were lenient about us showing them our IDs. However, once I was of age, it became more frequent. When I get a job and I moved to London, work socials meant that my drinking escalated even further. After a few months of living there, I went to a party and I got really, really freaking drunk. Alcohol affects us in different ways, but for me, the second that I started drinking, I become flirtatious and provocative. This part was no damn different. I have to tell you something, I said to my boyfriend as soon as I saw him. It all came tumbling out, followed by tears and anger words as he processed. And I said, Why? he demanded. I honestly couldn't give him an answer. Eventually, we split up. Ultimately, the main reason he ended it was that he believed that Alf was just an excuse for what happened and he thought there was a deep underlying problem in our relationship. I tried to tell him that it wasn't true and that I would never had made that decision while sober and that I still loved him but he wouldn't believe anything I told him. I was so frustrated that since looked at scientific research into decision making while drunk. What I found out really surprised me and I wish I could have shared him with it at the moment. The breakup was really hard. I started drinking more as a way to self-medicate myself. After three years of single life, which for me meant lots more drinking and partying, I met someone new and it was going freaking great. Mark and I fell in love and we moved in together, but as my drinking continued, I started flirting with other men. Whenever I became drunk, I would become such a more outgoing and sexual person. I found myself touching men's arms and being really jokey with them. There was one person this happened with a lot, one of my male friends. We used to send each other flirty messages. One time, we were arranged to meet up via text, but I was really drunk. I can't wait to see you. Kisses, I wrote. Is it wrong what I meant to say I want to kiss you? He replied. Our chat was always, always harmless. But then my partner saw the text. He'd had enough of my flirting. He had enough of my drinking. 
he kicked me the hell out. It wasn't until I was fourth out of my hotel and my home that I realized how things bad had to come. I went to stay with my brother and I was desperate not to repeat the same mistake. It felt like alcohol had caused my life to spiral out of control. I'm an introvert, but I'd become quite loud and obnoxious when I was drinking. I realized I'm neither of those things. Alcohol was turning me into a monster. I took a gamble and thought maybe I can stop drinking for a hundred days. I haven't touched alcohol since. I've been sober for a good 18 months. It's been tough but I've found a great network of new people. I read Kathleen Gray's book The Unexpected Joy of Being Sober and followed her suggestion to attempt a 100 day sober stint. Those first few months were the biggest challenge. I've never taken on and quite emotional at times. The simple act of not drinking alcohol became the most important thing in my life. I started running more and recently completed my first marathon. I would never have gotten out of bed for a weekend whenever I was drinking. Nowadays I've become more accustomed to partying, dancing and hanging out in the public without having a sip of booze. I've wised up to the potential triggers and take better care of myself to avoid them. If I'm stressed or upset, I'll exercise or talk to my friends instead. It feels like an ever increasing amount of pubs and bars are wising up to the fact that fewer people are drinking alcohol so there are more options for us. One added benefit was that Mark took me back and I quit drinking, our relationship grew and grew stronger. He was pretty much too teetal when we met so maybe my subconscious chose him as a bit for freedom from booze. Now I'm sober I don't flirt with men anymore. I see that there are men that are attractive but any desire to flirt with someone else has completely disappeared. I know that actually since I've stopped drinking, I'm more authentic with myself than I ever was when I was a drinker. This gamble paid off. I'm not just sober, I'm also engaged to be married. Mark recently told me that if I've carried on drinking, there's no way we would have lasted.